Hello everyone and welcome to Dilzim Plays The Kingdom of Loathing. As you can see, uh, overnight I got a message from the tutorial. It says, Welcome back Dilzim. I'm pleased to see you've decided to try out another day of adventuring. Here's a little something with which to wet your whistle. Enjoy. I acquired a tutorial care package. This is a care package given to you by the tutorial. He was even kind enough to wrap it in plain brown paper so that anyone who sees you with it will assume you've ordered something naughty. Okay, well, let's go take a look what, and see what's in that uh, care package, then. Um, let's look at my inventory. There we go. Miscellaneous. My tutorial care package. I acquired three bowls of Oriole's Nest soup. This is a bowl of soup made from fragments of the toot Oriole's Nest covered in a rabbit liver broth. It smells a lot better than it sounds, honest. And I've also acquired three bottles of Mount Noob Pale Ale. This is a bottle of beer brewed by the Toot Oriole. The hand-painted label claims it's made with the finest barley and hops grown on the scenic slopes of Mount Noob. Alright, well that's very nice. I'm not sure what the figurine of a wretched-looking seal does. I'm going to use it and find out. You place the figurine at your feet and position a seal blubber candle on the ground in front of it. Cold and shadow gather around you, and time sleeps, seems to slow to a crawl. Echoes of your northern ancestry rise up from the depths of your consciousness. Whispering words in the forgotten tongue, tongues of your forefathers, you feel your clubbing muscles begin to twitch with anticipation. I am fighting a spawn of Wally. <laughs> I speak the candle and light the word. And speak. Th uh, let me try that again. I light the candle and speak the ancient words. A ring of sickly green light coalesces around you, and there is a sound reminiscent of vomiting snakes. As in snakes vomiting, not somebody ate some snakes that didn't agree with him. As a loathsome creature feed fades into view around you, it is the. Sp it's a spawn of Wally, wretched Wally specifically, one of the seven seals of the, the Infernal Abyss. Condemned for unspeakable crimes against his brethren, he wallows, eyeless, earless, noseless, navigating his foul domain only by senses of shame and outrage. When his hatred grows too strong for his frail, impotent body to contain, it is given form as one of these things. It's pretty disgusting. If you weren't so familiar with seals, you probably wouldn't even recognize it as one. It's all tentacles and teeth, but more importantly, it's all up in your grill. Now, I've uh, gone and changed the combat interface that I'm using. I can uh, put a few things onto the bar here. I'll add my lunge smack, and I'll have a repeat last action or adventure again there as well. Let's just see what happens when I lunge smack it. Lunge toward my opponent and smack it with Dr. Hobo's scalpel, dealing one plus one plus one damage. Ooh. It gnaws me gnaws no, gnaws my thigh down to the bone. You didn't even know there was a bone in there. Okay. Well, I don't seem to be doing a ton of damage, but neither does it. You toss the Dr. Hobo scalpel, for, scalpel from hand to hand, shuffling back and forth in a carefully choreographed pattern, then lunge at it and stab it for one plus one damage. Do I have other... not really. Okay, well, let's keep lunge smacking. You lunge towards your opponent and then smack it with your Dr. Hobo scalpel. It tries to hit you up high with its tail, but you I tail it out of the way. And paw the ground like a bull, or like a bull seal maybe, and then lunge toward your foe, smacking it for one plus one plus one damage. That's cold and that's stinky, I think. It tries to garrot you with a sin sinuous tentacle, but without being sin... without... That It tries to garrot you with a sinuous tentacle, but being without sinuous tentacles yourself, you duck out of the way and cast a stone at it. I paw at the ground like a bull. I defeated it. I have acquired a tainted seal's blood. It's a potion and a meat pasting component. Here's what you do. Get some seal's blood. Taint that blood. And when your roommates need blood, give them the tainted seal's blood. It's a perfect plan. Just don't touch me, please. I cannot stand the way you tease. That's a reference to something. I don't get it. It gives me an effect of corruption of wretched Wally. Which gives me muscle, weapon damage, and 3.5, 3 to 5 HP per adventure. That's not a bad uh, thing for fighting a spawn of Wally. Let's go back to my inventory. I'll hold off on that until I need something a little more dangerous. I could go and fight the boss bat. Well, I'm going to start by eating some bowls of Oriole's Nest soup. 
Okay, I gained six adventures and three fullness. You can see I've added a fullness meter over here. It works the same as the drunken meter. After after a while, I will get too full to eat anymore. So I've got 80 adventures to start with, but I've already eaten a bunch. Let's see what we can see. Now, we never went into the wrong side of the tracks. Over on the wrong side of the tracks, you've got the Department of Shadowy Arts and Crafts, which is where you go if you're a, a, a disco bandit or an accordion thief. There's a thatch-roofed casino, which I need a casino pass to gamble at. There's a graffiti wall. I can uh, right here if I buy some spray paint, but uh, I have no real interest in doing that. Uh, there's a sleazy back alley I can adventure in, though. You're fighting a rushing bum. In the sleazy back alley, you are bum-rushed by, by a rushing bum. Yikes, you get to jump on him. Make a big X on him with your scalpel. X never, ever marks the spot, but in this case, it marks the spot where you did 25 damage. You win the fight, and they gain two beefiness. Fighting a big creepy spider in the sleazy back alley, or attacked by a big, big creepy spider, it promises not to kill you, but you're not sure you believe it. You slash it with the scalpel, taking 27 points of of its precious hit points. It looks like there's nothing it cannot possess that you cannot take away. <laughs> that's a lovely reference. Oh, that's funny. I am fighting a drunken half-orc hobo. In the sleazy back alley, you are set upon by a drunken half-orc hobo. You are as overpowered by his stench as you are confused by his slurred missives. One thing's for sure, though. It's beat or be beaten. I get the jump on him. I grip my Dr. Hobo scalpel and get all stabby on him. I acquired dirty hobo gloves. Ooh, it gives me stench damage. And uh some and some moxie weed. Well let's go go into my inventory and see if I have uh Okay, I can equip the dirty hobo gloves. So that's nice. We'll do some extra stench damage here. I do need to get my, my mysticality up a bit. But uh We'll go back into my consumables here and use the moxie weed. Don't want to eat any of this because I might be able to use it to cook some stuff. And it's not going to be very good by itself. You see, it's a crappy food by itself. It's a much better. It's, it's much better if something else here. Like if this is a cooking ingredient, that'd be much better cooked into something else. All right. Let's go back to the sleazy back alley for a few adventures here. Slash with your scalpel and it chooses to step forward rather than dodge. It chose poorly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it gets the jump on you. It encloses you in a cocoon, but Steve Gutenberg saves you. <laughs> All right. Oh, 28 plus 3 damage. Critical hit, new attack damage record. Very nice. And it's a couple of spider webs, which uh, I can use as a combat item by flinging it at an enemy, but I don't really have much need to do that yet. It smells like the web from a spider. It's sort of sticky in it. it smells like spiders. Fancy that. Okay. What else have I got that I can do here? I could go to the nearby plains and go inside the grassy knoll and try to get the stuff for the meat car. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's do that. What do I need? My Degrassi Knoll shopping list. I need to get from the gearheads a meat stack, a cog, an empty meat tank, tires, spring, rims, sprocket, and meat paste. Hmm, okay. The rims are out of stock though. That might be problematic. But let's go into the to the grassy knoll and check out the garage here. We are fighting a knollish tire juggler. This is a knoll who wanders to grassy knoll, uh, juggling enormous tires. No one knows why. He gets the jump on you. He hits you with all four tires. You stagger hurt, but not beaten. Then you feel the spare tire collide with your shoulder. You lose three hit points. I hit him for 20 plus three damage. I win the fight. I get some tires. These are some tires you got from a gnomish, or gnollish tile, tire juggler. They're too big to juggle, but maybe you could find some other use for them. Well, let's see. Oh, a guard bugbear. This is a bugbear kept by the gnolls of Degrassi Knoll as a guardian and pet. It gets the jump on me. He scratches you with one of his claws. Here's hoping you don't get bugbear scratch fever. I whack him around. A gnollish gearhead. Ooh, 
Ooh, I got a Nolish toolbox. This is a toolbox dropped by a Nolish gearhead. It's probably got machine parts inside it. Well, let's go take a look and see what I found here. A cog, a spring, and an empty meat tank. Hmm. Well, I don't know if you're paying attention, but when I went in here and I was looking at making meat stuff, I did have the option of making a meat stack. That's a hundred meat. So we'll only make one of those. And let's see what happens if we combine an empty meat tank with a meat stack. Um, ooh, I have a full meat tank now. This is a meat tank which is full of meat. There's no question as to why this is called a meat tank. Well, that's good. I don't know if I can do anything else with what I got here. We got a, a cog and a spring. Can I combine that? No. Okay. Well, nothing else here seems to make sense. So let's go back to the garage. Another guard bugbear. He bites you in the ankle with his vicious bugbear fangs. Okay. I indulge in a little hack and slash with my Dr. Hobo scalpel. The hacking doesn't seem to be very effective, and you should really see a doctor about that. But the slashing does 14 plus 3 damage. <laughs> You watch with glee as Wonklin extracts, fi extracts five drops of blood from your enemy. Then you listen with barely concealed horror as he squirts the blood into your ear. Uh, okay, Wonklin. Maybe not, then. Alright, I got some more tires. More tire juggler. Ooh, I got some knoll teeth as well. These are teeth from a knoll. They look good on a necklace. Hmm. Okay, more killing of tire jugglers. Guard bugbear. Ooh, I got a bugbear bung guard. This is a pair of pants is formerly owned by a bugbear. The pants fit you perfectly. Is there something you'd like to tell us? It's part of an outfit called bugbear costume. Interesting. It's a pair of pants with 30 power. That might be better than what I got on. Let's check it out here. I'm wearing knob goblin pants. But they give me muscle plus one, and the bugbear bung guard is 30, but no muscle increase. So let us continue wearing the knob goblin pants. He whips you in the knee with his skinny little arms. Icky. Alright. Another Nolish gearhead here. Oh, I got another Nolish toolbox. Let's see what's in there. Got two sprockets and a cog. Hmm. Well, wow, let's uh, let's go back to seeing what I can combine together here. If I take a cog and a sprocket, no. What if I take a sprocket and a spring? Oh, ho, I have a sprocket assembly. And then if I take that sprocket assembly and combine it with a cog, I get a cog and sprocket assembly. And if I take my full meat tank and combine it with a cog and sprocket assembly, I have a meat engine. I am really close to putting together a meat gar. I have tires, but there are no they said there were no rims. Let's see if I can if I can find something. I haven't been to the big mountains in a while. Holy cow, there's a lot of stuff here that wasn't here before. Alright, so there's a barrel full of barrels. You enter the barrel and see row upon row of smaller barrels. Click one to smash it and see what's inside. Smashing a barrel takes one adventure. Oh, God, I'm fighting a mimic. Okay, thrust smack the mimic. Okay, I cannot fight the mimic. The mimic killed me. Well, that's how that goes, I guess. I had put a... I wanted to link to my campground. I had done this before, but... um. I wanted a picture of a tent, and I wanted to put that over here. Okay. That didn't do what I wanted it to. I wanted a link to my campground. Sorry for making you watch this, but... And I wanted to change the icon to a tent, and I wanted to add that icon. No, that's not what I wanted to do, adding an icon. I wanted a tent, 
And I wanted to put you... I can't put you over there. Huh. Link thee to my campground. That doesn't seem to be working. Well, I guess I'll just have to go to my campground the old-fashioned way until I figure out how to make that work. We'll rest in my tent. I am no longer beaten up, so I will rest again. And one more time to return all of my hit points. So, there was the barrel full of barrels. We have the Temple of Literacy. As you enter the temple and approach the Altar of Literacy, you see the faint outline of a human figure standing in front of it. Hello, says the figure. I'm the ghost of the English language. At this time, you're not allowed to enter the chat. This feature is reserved for those who are members of the Order of the Literate. If you wish to gain access to the chat, you must perform a series of tasks in order to prove that you can be trusted with the privileges and responsibilities of the Order. First, read the Policies of Loathing. I've read them before. I, I'm not going to read them out to you. It's not that important. Now, type the following sentence into the text box below. Capitalization and punctuation count. I have read the policies of loathing. I've done this before, apparently, and I promise to abide by them. Period. Okay. Next, you must complete the following sentences. When they get there, they're going to put on their mittens. You're nuts if you think I'm going to polish your armor for free. Finally, you must answer this fiendishly difficult trivia question. What color was George Washington's favorite black horse? I'm not going to lie, a little embarrassing. The first time when I read this, I, I, I sat here going, I don't know anything about George Washington, but it turns out I'm kind of an idiot. Um, so now I submit that. Congratulations, you have demonstrated both the ability to read and write. You have been granted access to the Kingdom of Loathing chat. The ghost of the English language looks up at you with pride in his eyes. At least you think it's pride. It's kind of hard to tell with ghost eyes. You have already proven yourself literate. Go forth, then, and avenge my death. This is probably the best, uh, the best chat thing I've ever seen. There's a Dungeoneers Association. Um, my computer's apparently having some issues with the loading. Let's try that again. There's a Dungeoneers Association. There we go. We have Boris's gate, which is closed. Jarlsberg's gate, which is closed, and Sneaky Pete's gate, which is closed. There's a vending machine. Aha! I have no fat loot tokens. Okay. I can get some cool stuff if I get fat loot tokens. This book contains a powerful spell from Loathing's ancient past. Fair warning, though, most of the wizards of, wizards of Loathing's ancient past were not, shall we say, overachievers. Grant skills, singer's faithful ocelot. The, mare, the mage singer was so lazy that he couldn't even be bothered to tie his own shoes by hand, so he created a spell that would summon a tiny ocelot to do him. Gives effect to singer's faithful ocelot. You've got a tiny magical ocelot hanging around near your feet in case your shoes come untied, because this doesn't happen that often. He's in the habit of entertaining himself by randomly stealing stuff from monsters you fight. That's funny. Okay, I don't have any of this. Let's go back here. There's a haiku dungeon. You are fighting a gelatinous cube. This 10 by 10 room is exactly the right size. Gelatinous cube. A huge, gleaming cube. The length and height of the hall squishes toward you. Before it sees you, you're already attacking. You're sneaky like that. Well, let's thrust smack it. A tricky riddle. Who did 36 damage? The answer, you, stud. With your final blow, you deliver the smackdown. Sweet, sweet victory. On the nearby ground, you can see 28 meat. Score! You pick it up. You work up a sweat. Gain two muscle from the fight. Sweet. Now go shower. Okay, I could do that. I could continue adventuring there. I don't have a ton of adventures for the day, and I want to keep exploring a bit. There's a daily dungeon. Chamber one of the daily dungeon is empty, but leading the door leading to the next room is closed. You hate closed doors. Most of the time in your experience, they're not only closed, but also locked. The nerve of those doors. Anyway, what are you going to do about it? Well, the only thing I can do is try the doorknob or leave. I don't have the 30 muscle mysticality or moxie to get through it. So let's try the doorknob. You walk right up to the door and turn the handle. Surprisingly, the door is not actually locked. Unsurprisingly, opening it triggers a trap. 
Did you seriously learn nothing in adventuring school? A cloud of blue gas pours out through the keyhole. You catch a faint whiff of sour and lose consciousness for a while. Okay, so I could adventure again, but I don't really appear to have the stats to adventure in the Daily Dungeon yet. After a while, you'll be able to get all the way through the Daily Dungeon, and you get cool stuff at the end for beating it. Um, probably, at a guess, um, fat loot tokens, but uh, I don't know for sure. But uh, because it's the Daily Dungeon, you can only actually complete it once per day. So we're done in the Dungeoneers Association. Uh, what's up? There's a hermitage. The hermit looks at you expectantly, and when you don't respond, he points to a crudely chalked sign on the wall reading, Hermit Permit Required, Pursuant to Seaside Town Ordinance 3769. Stupid bureaucrats, always ruining everybody's fun with their permits and forms. You glance behind him and see a bunch of items arrayed on a, filth, uh, on a, on a filthy carpet. Okay, well there's seal tooth, chisel, petrified noodles, habanero pepper, banjo strings, hot buttered, hot buttered roll, wooden, fi wooden figurine... Ketchup, catsup, volleyball, figurine of an ancient seal, and ten-leaf clover. There's three in stock left for today. Well, there's nothing there that really interests me. Let's go back to town and see if I can find some rims. Okay, in the market square, in the general store... Oh, you get th sweet rims for 300 meat. Sweet. Sweet! <laughs> oh, but let's not buy the hermit permit, because then I won't have enough to buy the sweet rims. I acquire sweet rims. Man, check out the chrome on those babies. Those are some sweet rims. Alright, so let's go back to my crafting here. Let's take my sweet rims and combine them with my dope tires. What? What happened to my tires? Oh, they're just tires. <laughs> the dope comes in a moment. I acquired dope wheels. Check out those wheels, Holmes. Nice tires, nice rims. The ladies are really going to dig those. So, let's take my meat engine and my dope wheels and combine them and I acquire a bitchin meat car. This is one bitchin meat car, man. This thing will be great for going down to the store. You can even run over some old lady one night at the county fair and probably not even get arrested because your dad's the mayor. Allows travel to Desert Beach. Cannot be traded or discarded. Well, if you remember, the uh, there was somebody in Seaside Town who wanted to see wanted to, who, who told me about the meat car. So Olaf the janitor says, Ah, I see you have rebuilt the meat car. Thank you, Dilson. After such trials, you deserve a respite. Perhaps a trip to the beach? I shall mark it on your map for you. Keep your eyes peeled if you decide to head south of the border. It can be a dangerous place. If you're in the mood for something safer, you can always just head to the travel agency instead. Well, let's go see what's on the desert beach, which is now available. So we have border town. We have south of the border. In Border Town, we have the Mall of Loathing. I need to be level 5 to enter the Mall of Loathing. Okay, well, fine. Let's go back <laughs> to Border Town. There's a trophy hut. I'm currently not entitled to any trophies. There's a gift shop. You could uh, buy any number of groovy gift items or send, head into the back room to send someone a package. I could send to a, to a player who I'm friends with, who, by the way, if you're watching, you should totally play the game. It's awesome. Um, go back to the gift shop. I can buy uh, a bunch of stuff, including a urinal cake. Okay, it's surprisingly tasty, but this really isn't something you should give to anyone you actually like. It's the perfect way for saying, thanks for leading my clan, or thanks for PvPing the crap out of me, or I'm not feeling all right today. I'm not feeling all that great. <laughs> okay. So what else do we have in Porter Town? We have Uncle P's Antiques. Welcome to our antique store, which is absolutely, positively a legitimate establishment, not a front for any sort of criminal activities. So the cheapest thing I could get here is an antique accordion for a thousand meat. I could get a fancy black tie, a fancy top hat, fancy tuxedo pants, a villa document. This piece of paper is covered with fine print, so fine you can't actually read it. It is the word villa in big letters at the top, though. That's a hundred million meat, though. Uh, people do it. There's also an adventuring place down here called South of the Border. Let's see what's down here. As you're walking down one of the seedier back alleys in Border Town, you see a sign that says, Farmacia de Suenos. You walk inside and see a dirty glass display case full of different types of medicines. A woman in a dirty lab coat walks out from the back room and, sees, and sizes you up. 
Ah, amigo, you appear to have a serious affliction, she says. Perhaps you are in need of some medication? This one in particular, I think, would suit you well. She holds up a bottle and you read the label. Meligra, increase the size of your weapon. Battle for hours without getting tired. Side effects include headache, vomiting of intestines, and death. What makes you think my weapon is too small, you say, offended. Now, now, everyone needs a bigger weapon, amigo. There's no shame in it. Don't I need a scroll from one of the doctors in loathing to get this stuff, you ask? Perhaps elsewhere, but here we do not believe in making obstacles to people getting quality health care, she says, and smiles. Well, my weapon is just fine the way it is, but, you know, I think my friend was talking about how he wanted his weapon bigger the other day. So perhaps I'll, uh, maybe I'll pick some up for him. Certainly, amigo. I hope you, I mean, your friend will enjoy them. I have acquired some Miligra pills. These tiny blue pills are supposed to enlarge your weapon and make you able to attack for hours on end without tiring. You're not sure how a pill could affect your, affect your weapon, but they seem to work. It gives you the effect Engorged Weapon for five adventures. Your weapon is massive and mighty. You could break down walls with it. Okay. Let's adventure here one more time. You're fighting an angry piñata. This is a creature made from papier-mâché and straw, hollowed out and full of tasty candy. His entire purpose in life is to be beaten until his body breaks open so people can eat his insides. Wouldn't you be angry? Let's thrust smack it. Or I suppose lunge smack it. You lunge towards your opponent and then smack it with your Dr. Hobo scalpel, dealing 15 plus 3 plus 3 damage. I've, gained, I've won the fight, I've gained a pound and a pile of candy. All right. Well, let's go see what's the what's in the pile of candy. Two marzipan skulls and two yummy tummy beans. Okay, marzipan skull is a potion. It gives me a sugar rush, which gives me twenty percent combat initiative, muscle plus five percent, moxie plus five percent, and mysticality minus ten percent. The yummy tummy beans will also give me sugar rush. Okay. Cool, so let's go back to the beach here. Let's check out the shore. Okay. It costs three adventures and 500 meat to select a package, and there's also a gift shop. Okay, I don't have any trip script, so I can't buy anything at the gift shop. But, let's see, let's go to the distant woods. Uh, there was a, there felt like there was a lot of adventuring still to be done in the woods, so I'm gonna do that for a while. Wolfman's got nards. He tries to go for your jugular, but ends up accidentally kicking himself in his own nards. You went sympathetically. Okay. Yeah, a spooky vampire. A bar. Okay, so last time I followed the stream. When I followed the stream, I had a couple of other options. I'm going to follow the stream again. I'm not going to march to the marsh because I know what's in there. There's a cave. And I could go further upstream. Let's squeeze into the cave. Oh ho! I gained 300 meat and a tree hold coin. This is an ancient, irregularly shaped coin with three tree shaped holes cut out of it. It's either some part of an elaborate puzzle or the work of some very, very strange puzzle. It's a quest item and it cannot be discarded. Well, let's adventure again. Well, beat up some bad guys. Get some dried faces. Okay, so. There was one other thing that I could do at the at the stream. Let's go further upstream. You make like a salmon would if it could walk and walk a, upstream a ways. Encounter a vampire. He doesn't seem to have uh, noticed you. How would you like to proceed? I would like to interrogate the vampire. You bum rush the vampire and hold him up a tree while you ask him a series of questions. You're so intimidating he seems to forget about his fangs with the fact that he could easily transform into a mist and escape your clutches. Your mad intimidation skills make you feel big and tough. Okay. Fight a Triffid. Alright, let's follow the old road instead this time. Pass a set of old wagon ruts leading deeper into the forest, just past a cobblestone path leading to a run-down cottage. As you're trying to decide which of those things to investigate, you hear whistling from behind you and turn around to see a hunter sitting a tree stand just off the road. Let's talk to the hunter. 
Howdy, adventurer. So, seen any bar around here? I'm hunting them, you see. I haven't, but now that you mention it, I could use a drink, you reply. Hunter looks at you quizzically. Anyway, I collect their skins. Useful as I'll get out of bar skin is. If you find any, I'll gladly take them off your hands. I pay top sirloin, too. Let's call it 75 meat apiece. This here also doubles as a tree stand, so if you're interested in buying any trees, just let me know. I got hundreds of them. It's literally like they grow on trees. Okay, well, let's buy a tree for 100 meat. I acquire a spooky sapling. This is a sapling from the spooky forest. It twitches with magicalness. You can feel it trying to grow larger. Hmm. Well, let's take my leave of him. More spooky vampires. Okay. More vampires. A warwolf. A spooky vampire. A bar. Ooh, I got a bar skin. Okay. I'm not going to sell that when I find the guy, because there's something cooler you can do with it. I just need to get some wooden sticks. Let's keep adventuring here. Spooky mummy. Alright, let's follow the old road, old road again and knock on the college door. Ah, you knock on the cottage door and is opened by none other than the famed vampire hunter G. You, have you seen any vampires around here? The forest is crawling with them. Crawling! I, er, you, you stammer. Take these. If you find a vampire, use them to impale them and tear out its heart. And bring the heart back to me. I use them for... Well, n never mind what I use them for. Stop asking so many questions. But I didn't... You say as you shove some stakes into your hands and slams, and slams the door in your face. So I have some wooden stakes. I could use them as a weapon, but they're also a meat pasting component. And I know what to do with them. I'm going to go back into my inventory here, as soon as my computer catches up. And I'm going to craft stuff. I need to make meat paste, but I only need one. So I'm going to take bar skin and combine it with the wooden stakes. And now I have a bar skin tent. This is a tent made from the skin of a bar. It's pretty tough, and the fur makes it co pretty comfortable, too. An outdoorsman is you. So I'll go back to my inventory, and I will take my bar skin tent. Where is it? Ah, and I will use it. Installing this at the campsite will destroy your newbie sport tent. Are you sure you want to proceed? Yes. Okay. I fold up my newbie sport tent and throw it down a well. Goodbye, tent. After struggling with the poles for a few minutes, you erect the bar skin tent. I'm going to go back to my campsite. You may have remembered when I was sleeping there before that when I slept there, I gained back about 10 of each hit points and magical points. Now I get about 20 per time that I rest, so that's very handy. But let's go back to the forest. Okay. Actually, let's see. I want to go back to town. Market Square, General Store. Spray paint, fermenting powder, soda water, hermit permit. Oh, it's a hermit permit. This is a permit which allows you to make a pilgrimage to see the hermit which lives in the big mountains. That's good to know. Sweet rims, dingy planks, familiar grow terrarium, hairspray. I could get some nicer things for the kitchen, but I don't have nearly that much meat. The general store. Once I was a hero of the cola wars. Cola wars. Now I wage war against high prices. All right, let's go back to the market square here. I'm going to need a flea market. Lets me buy stuff from other characters. There's a Mr. Store. You can get Mr. Accessories by donating to support the Kingdom of Loathing, which is great, but I don't have any money at the moment. You can go here and donate that way, but uh, we're actually going to need to go close that tab. Sorry about that. And we're back to full screen. All right, so what else can I do? On the right side of the tracks, we've got Spooky Raven Man. Uh, I can go into the haunted pantry. Pardon me, shouts a man that approaches as you near the pantry. Can I trouble you with a spot of assistance? With what? Well, you see, I've picked this birthday cake from my friend Claude, and I thought I'd play a bit of a trick on the old chap. So I used these hilarious novelty candles that are very difficult to blow out. It says on the package that they can't be lit by normal matches. Apparently some sort of magical fire is required. Do you suppose you could be so kind as to find some for me and get these candles burning? I'll see what I can do. Okay. I can't go in there. 
Open the door to the kitchen, but before you can enter, there's an ear-splitting screech and the door slams shut in front of you. Hmm. Apparently somebody doesn't want you going in there. Okay. Well. Let's go. Oh, I've got enough money, I think, for... Oh, no, I need a little bit more meat. Let's go back to... Let's go back to the forest. I'm fighting a werewolf. A spooky vampire. A wolf man. Another bar. I got more bar skin. He runs at you but runs into the Flagstaff. Welcome to Flagstaff, Warwolf. Alright, let's go back to following the old road. Let's follow the ruts this time. You follow the wagon ruts, being careful not to get stuck in them until you find an old overturned meat wagon. You search, your, you search through the wreckage and help yourself to the spoils and the freshes. You gain 58 meat. Well, let's go back to the spooky forest. He tries to lycanthrope you in the giblets in the eye at the same time, but ends up hitting neither. You grip your Dr. Hobo scalpel and get all stabby on him. Let's keep going here. Triffid. Well, that old bar tried to claw you right in the foot, but I reckon he missed. uses spooky hypnotic eyes on you, but loses a contact lens and has to search for it. Got a vampire collar. <laughs> okay. As a collar, as a creature of the night, a hunter with humanity as its prey, it suffers from its eternal bloodlust, forever cut off from the world, beautiful in its solitude. It is the most exquisitely tormented piece of black velvet you've ever seen. It comes with an enchantment that makes you act like a vampire. Blah. Well, I've never seen that before. Let's see what it does. Let's equip the vampire color. And let's adventure in the spooky forest. Okay. More triffids. Okay, so I follow the old road and explore the stream. Let's brave the dark thicket. Shadows gather as you follow the path into the dark thicket. The shadows skitter off before you can see what they were gathering, but that's not important right now. What's important is that you're in the thick of this thicket. You should get busy with whatever you're doing in here so you can get the hell out. There's a slightly darker path than the path you came in on, leading deeper into the thicket. There's also an area of an extremely thick plant growth off to the side of the path. Off in the distance, you notice a pair of trees that look suspiciously like two of the three holes in that weird coin you found in Chester Meatpot's wallet. You hold up the coin and look through it, and sure enough, they match up. You see something sticking out of the ground through the third hole. You should probably go and check whatever that thing is. You walk to the spot indicated by the third coin hole, and lo and behold, there's a strange monolith sticking out of the ground. It's featureless, except for a slot that coincidentally looks to be exactly the same size as the coin. It's pretty clear what you're supposed to do here. Let's insert the coin to continue. You drop the strange coin into the slot, and a blue gross glow spreads across the monolith and disappears, and a map appears on the smooth stone surface. You quickly make some paper out of a nearby tree and some ink out of a nearby um, squirrel. You make a copy of the map and stick it in your pocket. A spooky temple map is a usable quest item. Well, let's see what it does. You follow the map to the spooky forest and arrive at the base of the hidden temple. Unfortunately, the first step is too high to reach and you can't go inside. You notice a patch of loose soil at the base of the step, though. Well, let's see what else we can discover in here. Spooky mummy. Alright, I need to adventure again. <laughs> okay. I get to jump on him. Alright, let's brave the dark thicket. Let's investigate the dense foliage. I acquire an item, Spooky Grow Fertilizer. Let's see what happens if I try that map again. 
You plant your spooky sapling at the base of the temple, you spray it with your spooky grow fertilizer, and it immediately grows to 20 feet in height. You can easily climb the branches to reach the first step of the temple now. Well, there's a hidden temple. I am fighting a ba relief sheep. Oh, God. With a menacing ba, is there any other kind? One of the ba relief sheep carved in the wall leaps off and attacks you. You'd better quit wool gathering and attack, lest it leave you shorn of your dignity. You get to jump on her. You indulge in a little hack and slash with your Dr. Hobo scalpel. The hacking doesn't seem to be very effective, and you should really see a doctor about that. But the slashing does 9 plus 3 damage. Bam, piff. Wow. Okay, let's hit it again. I... Okay. I acquire stone wool. This is like a primitive version of steel wool. If your name was Lee and you were into making models of happy turtles out of various materials, you might use this to make a, wear a merry wool stone craft shell, Lee. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. A merry wool stone craft shell, E. That's, that's good, actually. That's really clever. I'm fighting a stone temple pirate. In one of the myriad stone carved pirate heads on the walls comes to life as you approach. Intruder! He shouts, glaring at you with the eyes of disarray. Or one of them, anyway. The other one's under an eye patch. Looks like you'll need to fight him now, rather than wait for tomorrow. I get to jump on him. You use Dr. Hobo Scalpel to cut like a knife, but it feels so right. To you, that is, not to your enemy who takes 8 plus 3 damage. The Stone Temple Pilot hits you in the hand. At least your hand likes to heal, so it better get so it'll get better as long as you take time for it. <laughs> I hope you guys like obscure music jokes, because there's going to be a lot of them. Okay. You toss the doctor, doctor Hobo Scalpel from hand to hand, shuffling back and forth in a carefully choreographed pattern, then lunge at him and stab him for 9 damage. I am fighting a Craven Carven Raven. In this room within the temple, which is silent as a pimple, you were strolling with your thoughts as carefree as a lark. While you walked some cobweb snatching, suddenly there came a scratching, as of something stone-like hatching, hatching somewhere in the dark. Then, the came, then there came a bird descending, and your life intent on ending. Downward, downward came it wending, with a bite far worse, far worse than bark. Quoth the raven, Ark! You get to jump on him. <laughs> you use the Dr. Hobo scalpel to cut like a knife, but it feels so right to you. That is not your enemy who takes 11 damage. I win the fight. I get some shiny stones. They are usable. The stone birds in the hidden temple aren't just carvings, you know. They have feelings. They have needs, like the need to collect shiny objects like these. Okay. What happens when you use the shiny stones? You head into the, the part of Seaside Town where all the rich birds hang out and sell the stones to the highest bidder. Sweet. Let's go back to the Hidden Temple. Another Ba Relief Sheep. It stomps on you with its little stone hooves. It'd behoove you to avoid that in the future. <laughs> if I was more muscular, I'd be able to do some real damage against an opponent this strong. Oof. It stomps on me with its little stone hooves. Okay. You pot the ground like a bull or a bull seal. With a muffled blah, your collar suddenly leaps off your neck and sinks its fangs into your opponent's, dealing two damage. It returns to your neck and you feel strangely refreshed. Okay. Another stone temple pilots. Okay. I acquire an ancient poison dart. Little dusty little dart sat for centuries in an ancient trap mechanism in the hidden temple. These days they don't make poison like they used to, but they definitely used to make it like they used to. So the poison on this one is still probably good and potent. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's finish off the day here in the the, the pirate. All right. More stone wool. Oh, it's a potion. Let's try using the ancient poison dart. You chuck the dart directly into your opponent's mouth. She swallows it and turns a little green. Not exactly the outcome you expected, but you'll take it. Your opponent writhes as she takes 10 damage from the poison. It tries to bite you, then realizes you're not made out of grass. Alright, I do some hacking and slashing here, and, uh, and I win. Another stone temple pilot. Ow! He says that he wants to get next to you, and when you refuse, he has to hurt you, too. <laughs> okay. 
All right, another Craven Raven. Tries to slap you with a stone wing, but you wing a stone at it first. Oh, more shiny stones. Excellent. I haven't seen anything else but these things since I can't hear. He asks if when dogs begin to smell you, you'll smell alone. You ask him what that even means, and he has to ponder the question for a bit. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm almost out of adventures, though. Got another ancient poison darts. Another bar relief sheep. Tries to nuzzle you with its muzzle, but you distract it with a puzzle. Another stone temple pirate. I acquire an effect hardly poisoned at all with the 10 duration. All attributes minus 3. All attributes minus 10%. Ow! Paltry 3 damage. This opponent might be a little out of your league. Only because I'm poisoned. Well, let's see if I can rest that poison away. Nope. Okay, so at the beginning of the next set, at the beginning of the next go, I will have to find, I'll have to deal with the potion for another eight adventures. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining me. I am going to drink some booze and whatnot before I start today, but I'm going to do all that off camera. You don't need to watch me drink booze that, uh, that I've already got. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day, and uh, this has been Till Zim signing out.